This is the world's deadliest spider. We found the Brazilian wandering spider right there. And contrary to popular belief, spiders are almost never deadly. This one, however, is capable of killing a human. Now, I'm not going to pretend I was never scared of spiders, as I've clearly had some hesitation. This is the Brazilian wandering spider. In fact, I have always wondered how many of my fears were things I was born with, and how many were just what I learned from movies or my parents. Either way, I was determined I didn't want this fear of spiders. Those fangs! They are super long. I lost track of my spider. Maybe you have a friend that's scared of spiders. Maybe you are afraid of spiders. Well, if you are, this is the video for you because we're gonna talk all about how you can get over your fears. Or maybe you need to preview it first and then show them afterwards. <laughs> Arachnophobia is a term that some people, like myself, have used to describe a general fear of spiders. But we're going well beyond arachnophobia in this video. Are you ever scared of spiders? Mm -hmm. But for the record, true arachnophobia is an irrational fear of spiders, which can be debilitating and difficult to overcome. It's not uncommon either. Some 6% of people have true arachnophobia. As a biologist, and more specifically a behavioral ecologist, I've often felt my job as a general communicator was really to teach people not to be afraid of nature. Some of my friends and colleagues teach people not to be afraid of crocodiles. Others swim with sharks. Others big cats and some bears. They go to great lengths to tell a story that goes something like this. We've learned to be afraid of these animals, but they're really misunderstood creatures. But let's be honest, there is some nuance here. Without really knowing these animals, you should have a healthy fear of the ones that can kill you, like great white sharks and crocodiles, bears, big cats, and even very big snakes. But you should be able to differentiate that fear from, say, nurse sharks, tiny alligators, red pandas, house cats, and let's be honest, the vast majority of snakes. And that's because most animals in this world are not trying to kill you. There are only a few man-eaters left in this world. Knowing the differences will help keep you safe and will make your time outdoors way more enjoyable. But can you stop? And knowing how rare it is to actually encounter a man-eater, my colleagues have generally assumed that we have a fear of many of these animals because of what we learned from our culture and society at large. My mother, for instance, will never get over a deep fear of snakes, no matter how many times I try to explain that they're misunderstood. And I haven't always helped my case, especially when a few years ago I made a documentary about a Sulawesi reticulated python that literally swallowed someone whole. In fact, the more I learned about the monster snakes, the more I realized that we very much should have been afraid of snakes in the past, our Stone Age past more specifically, when we were living in close proximity to the wild areas they inhabit. It also seems clear that we have evolutionary adaptations for spotting and reacting to snakes. Now try to follow me on this line of thinking as it relates to my views on spiders. The snake detection theory put forth by scientists recently postulates that our brains and nervous system are highly adapted to detect snakes in our environment. Our eyes are forward and highly acute and our nervous system is very quick at responding to hidden dangers in the underbrush. All of this is very important for primate survival. Spiders are not nearly as dangerous as snakes. And there's snakes. But it also seems like arachnophobia could be a trait that would have provided some evolutionary advantages. If this tarantula bit me right now, most likely I would get a headache, I'd feel a bit nauseous and sick for two, three hours. Imagine you're living in an area where spiders could be common. A fear of spiders then would make sure you clean out every available part of the cave and it may be very helpful keeping you from getting bitten by a venomous spider. Now that spot in the Amazon I visited with entomologists, for instance, had wandering spiders all over the roof thatching. There's a Brazilian wandering spider, potentially harmful to humans. Our guide then described how painful this spider bite is, the most venomous in the world. Oh, By one, yeah, oh, and painful. it hurts. They are painful. I should also note deaths are rare. Only 15 people have died on record since 1903, and that's probably because they're very slow to bite. And that's why my entomologist friend here could pick this one up. Unless you squish it or harass it, it just doesn't want to bite. 
And the same is true with this spider from Georgia, the Joro spider. This is an invasive spider that looks big and scary, uh, but I'm here with Dave Coyle, who uh, is the expert on them, one of, one of the experts. Wouldn't you say you're like one the expert? Me, yeah. Here's a spider that looks like it could be dangerous, right? It's big, brightly colored, but it, it's really not. There's no evidence that it can even bite through human skin. These are spiders out there just trying to catch things and eat them. I've held these on countless occasions. My kids have held these. They just do this. They're crawling around. Yes, they can look big, and yes, some people are quite afraid of spiders, but the reality is there's really no danger these pose to people or pets. So the big take home, let the spider do its spider thing. Don't freak out. Try not to kill it. Having that knowledge is the first step in getting over your fear of spiders, but sometimes that doesn't stick. So the second step is spending time with spiders. With that, I recruited some of my kids' friends who have almost no experience with spiders to see if I could convert their fear into fascination. Are you ever scared of spiders? I'm actually kind of scared if it's small and really venomous. That's the most scared. If it's really big, I, I'll know where it is. It's not going to be like, where to go, where to go? And then it like, apparently it's like on my arm or something. Like, Say so if you knew more about the spider, whether it was dangerous or not, that would determine whether you were scared like about it? it? Probably. Yeah, kind of. To help me with this task, I invited my friend Elliot, who is a passionate keeper of creepy crawlies. Hey. Mr. Elliot has a bunch of cool cages and he's going to show you some spiders. But so this is the southern house spider. These spiders probably live in your area. The spider should come out. I want to put this cricket in there. Okay, here we go, here we go. All right, now what is the spider doing now? He's taking it back to his home. Trying to get back into the, the safety of the web. You see the, the back legs? It's wrapping up the legs of the uh, cricket so it can't fight back. The spider doesn't want to get injured as it's trying to capture its meal. It'd be neat to see it up close when they, when they catch it. You can actually see what's happening behind the scenes. It may not be all the, all the way paralyzed right now, but yeah, see it's still kind of struggling to get away to get kids interested in spiders. That was my main goal here. You were sitting right here. You were, you were scared of spiders earlier, but sitting right here, were you, were you fearful at all? Step two, check. And that's watching the spiders up close. Elliot has all sorts of cobweb castle cages, including small glass dome ones for jumping spiders, as well as enclosures for things like wasps. The theory is that by watching them on your desk every day, you start to have a fascination for them and you lose the fear. Kind of like a spider habitat. Oh look, it's moving. It's moving with spider. It's moving with the, the carpenter bee. I think the carpenter bee got killed. The final step though in overcoming your fear is the hardest. And that is letting the spiders crawl on you. Oh, that's no. not too bad, huh? I mean, that's... I'm gonna take it out. There's no reason to be scared of this spider. If you're a little bit hesitant, the first thing you do is you just sit and you watch it. And when you feel like you want it to crawl over your hand, just put your hand in front of it and it will crawl over it. Are you a little hesitant right now? Uh, yeah. When I, I say get to. it off okay. of me, I mean get it off. I, I want Every kid seemed willing to try. I just wanted to explain how they should stay calm. Because if you're calm, the fear will, with just a little bit of time, slowly erode away. They're very you. tiny. Oh, that's kind of cute. And let it crawl on your hand. Oh. Oh, oh that's... Oh. Is it tickle? <laughs> Can I get up on here? No. Oh, hey. get it off, get it off, get it off. <laughs> Look at oh, that. Stretching the bit. There you oh. go, Leo. You figured it out. Look at that. He's like I, a pro. Its legs are like... Isn't that cool? After about 10 minutes, everyone was holding the spider without fear and letting it crawl all over them. In fact, the experience really changed the view that most of them had on spiders. I'm actually surprised I let the spider crawl on me. Really? Yeah. I thought it would be a lot more scary, so now I like, like spiders. Yeah. So that completed my three-step process. First, learn about spiders. Get a book, watch a movie, or get on the internet. Two, observe spiders up close. Three, let spiders crawl on you. This technique can be used to get over other fears, too. It's the basics of exposure therapy. Is it a little tickly? You're good. And really is just a process of taking small steps forward by slowly habitualizing yourself to the stimulus. In this case, spiders. Subscribe to the channel for this. <laughs> Sub please subscribe. This is really a good opportunity to, to learn about spiders and to kind of question your phobias. In the end, I do think that like snakes, many of us probably have some ingrained fear of spiders. 
some more than others, but it's good to know we can get over it fairly easily. We now have a whole bunch of kids who love spiders. I love it. The big thing here is that if you voluntarily confront your fears in this fashion, you can start to move past them and it will make you stronger. And with spiders, the fears are irrational given the general toxicity of most spiders. Of course, I'm not saying you should pick up every spider. Doing that comes with some extra education as to which ones are safe and which ones pose some risks. I kind of like the take home I learned from Dave. Don't get me wrong, I don't think anyone really likes when a spider gets on you and you're not used to it. Like when you're walking through the woods and you walk into a great big web, I mean, I don't even like that and I do this stuff for my job, but most insects are pretty docile. Most arthropods are pretty docile. Uh, this is just a big, big docile spider that's just kind of wondering what is going on at this point. And you can see she's got webs kind of all over the place on my hands here. Uh, so yeah, holding them is not, not that big a deal, really. Let me end by saying this. If you are scared of spiders, you've already taken the first step by watching this video. The second might be to get a cobweb castle cage from Elliot and just observe them. If you get brave enough to let them crawl on you or you're helping someone else do that, I want to hear about it in the comments below. All of this is part of my continued education to get people used to being in the wild again. I want to thank our sponsor, Fabric Insurance. Fabric makes it really easy to get a quote for your life insurance. You can also make a will. I will admit, until I was introduced to Fabric, I hadn't done either. I thought it was too much work. I had mushroom time lapses to film and plants to discover and new areas to explore. But then I realized it's probably the best thing I could do with just a few extra minutes one afternoon. In literally 10 minutes, I was able to get a very affordable quote write a will, and have peace of mind that my family's coverage should something happen. It feels good to have life insurance because it's just there just in case. That's the best kind of insurance you can have. Let's not use it, but it's there. And in 10 minutes, you too can get a quote if you go to this link and in the description at meatfabric.com slash stone age man. Meatfabric.com slash stone age man. That's M-E-E-T fabric.com slash stone age man. It's really easy and a good thing for you to do for your loved ones. Thanks again to Dr. Dave Coyle with Clemson Extension, my patrons for their support, and to Elliot, whose Cobweb Castle YouTube channel is right here. Definitely go check them out. And we'll see you in the next video. Uh, butterflies were years ago. We're past butterflies. We're, we're at Paper Wasp now.